Why farmers should direct market. I'm gonna zip through this very quickly because I think you all have already drunk the Kool-Aid and you know, you know why we need to direct market, but sometimes it's good to just encapsulate it so we know where we are. And by the way, let me tell you, we are very open to questions. Uh, this is not just lecture style. Uh, we will have some interactive stuff. I've actually got some, some new stuff for us to, to play with, some new ideas. And um, so there will be some interactive, so please, please uh, don't be reluctant or shy about uh, jumping in. But one of the main reasons to direct market, in my opinion, is for overall business stability. In general, a quarter of the retail dollar comes from each of four components. They're listed here for you, production, processing, marketing, and distribution. The problem is most farms get all their income from one of these. Which one? Production. Production. Okay, and only one of these is subject to the vagaries of, of, um, of nature that makes every farmer feel like Farming is different than any other business because we have, as Alan Nation used to call, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. You know, weather, price, pestilence, and disease. It's what every farmer leans on the side of their pickup truck and whines about every day, right? Which one of those four is most subject to those vagaries? Production. Production. Right. When the locusts come, they don't eat the tires of the delivery vehicle. When the drought comes, it doesn't, it doesn't stop the, the, the internet access from working, right? Uh, when, the, when the rain comes and, and you get way too much rain, it doesn't, you know, destroy the stainless steel in the processing. So, for no more reason than to create stability stable income streams, here's the thing, the more dollars we load into non-production, okay, the more dollars we pull away from that, the vagaries of weather and price and pestilence and disease, and those become more stable, more stable income dollars. That's one huge reason, as we know, you know, we, we hear the middleman makes all the money and these processing, marketing, distribution, that's the middleman hat, right? Well, if that's where the money is, I wanna be one, okay? I wanna be one. And so rather than whining about that middleman that makes all the money, why don't we just join him and, uh, and, and enjoy the largesse, okay? So th there's, a, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of reasons here. Um, uh, Number two, it's, it's historically normal. I mean, the, uh, direct marketing, the idea of actually purchasing from, you know, within a local com commerce, you know, was the backbone bone of, of uh, secure food systems for many, many years. Um, it attracts the best and brightest, all these other things. When you start, as soon as you start talking about um, uh, messaging and um, as Jenny was saying, you know, sound biting and how do we compress complex ideas into simple little slogans, you know, that kind of stuff, man, um, I'm not saying that, it's, it, that it doesn't require a lot of uh, whatever genius and imagination to know where to, where to place the cross fence for the cows, <laughs> but, but it is a different set of, it's a different set of challenge, isn't it? It's a different set of imagination, creativity, it's a different skill set, and so I'm really big on trying to attract smarter people into farming. I don't know how much gentler to say it, but uh, uh, we've actually had rural brain drain for a long time, right? You know, as the, as the society has condescended toward rural, toward, toward uh, 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 agriculture. And basically, you know, if you're an A or B student, you're supposed to go, you know, become a lawyer, an attorney, work in IT, you know, sit in front of a Dilbert cubicle and, um, and, and press numbers into cyberspace for your career. And that's supposed to be, you know, this wonderful thing. And if you're a, if you're a C minus or less student, then, all right, well, then maybe agriculture's a path for you. And, and, and what I want to bring, I, I want to see us create um, uh, uh, cerebral, imaginative pathways where our best and brightest come, come back to the farm. 
and, and, and be affirmed in it and be encouraged in it. That's, that's, that's a, I think that's a noble goal. Um, another reason to direct market is that your clientele is portable. Many of us are working on leased farms, barred farms, uh, shared farms, and, and uh, our clientele, as long as you don't move 200 miles away, our clientele is portable. They, they, they can move with us. So it gives us, it gives us some wiggle room and flexibility to, um, to lease places, to create collaborative things, because um, uh, clientele is uh, portable. Um, by, by direct marketing, you get, a, you get your own built-in support group. You know, farming, farming is a lonely occupation, right? You're out there in the field moving the cows, moving the chickens, running that tractor, making hay, whatever all. Farming's a very lonely, lonely thing uh, compared to other vocations, you know, where at least even in a small office, you know, you got the you got the, yeah, you got people, you got the little, you know, a little, sometimes a soap opera, right? Uh, <laughs> sometimes it's Peyton Place. Um, but, 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 it, but at least there, there's community. There, there's people, there's, you know, uh, there's things. I mean, our, our daughter works in a very uh, small office. She's the agritourism director for, a, for a, a seven county area. It's a fairly small office. And it's just amazing how fast. Oh, you know, we went down and saw a movie with, you know, so-and-so at work. I mean, I mean, work is becoming now kind of a, uh, a, a catch-all for everything. It, it's, it's becoming life fulfillment. We'll talk about that more um, as we go. But anyway, your customers, when they come and they, um, I can remember, you know, our kids growing up and, and the customers would come and, 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 and tweak their cheek, you know, and say, oh, we, our family just depends on yours so much. We, we, would, we would not be able to be healthy if we didn't get your food. Thank you for doing this. You know what that does for a kid, you know, for the farmer, all right, to have that kind of emotional support. It's like having, you know, it's having uh, AAA for, uh, or a, whatever, um, AA, AAA, -A -A -A, whatever. Uh, it, it, you, got, you got it, whatever it is, all right. But, but, but you got your support group, okay. And in and, and a, and a vocation that's inherently lonely, direct marketing is really good. And especially if you're a Stockman grass farmer reader, it's even more lonely because even your farm neighbors think you're crazy. <laughs> right? I mean, our farm neighbors still call us typhoid Mary and, uh, um, you know, bioterrorists. You know, because we have unvaccinated chickens that run around in the fields and they're going to commiserate with the red-winged blackbirds and take our diseases. I mean, they got to be diseased because they're not vaccinated, right? And, and they're going to take that to, you know, their Tyson chicken houses. And they're going to lose their farm. And every child in Bangladesh is going to starve to death because we let our chickens, you know, commiserate with the red-winged blackbirds that didn't vaccinate them. I mean, I mean this, is, this is the thing. And so, and so when, we're, when we're outside that orthodoxy, um, it, it's even more lonely. And, and so our, our customers become, people say, you know, who's encouraged us? I say, it's our customers. Our customers are our, they're our support group. They're the ones that, uh, you know, and over the years we've had, you know, we've had tough years. Uh, you stay in it long enough, you will have a tough year. We've had people come in and just, you know, stuff a, stuff a bill in my pocket, say, yeah, I, I, I know you've had a tough time, uh, just, just take this. And, and they leave and you open it up and it's a hundred dollar bill, okay? I mean, we had a um, uh, we had a, a, a customer once. He came and and it was fairly early on there. And um, he said, "Look, you, you, you've written a book now. You you sh you you need to have a higher um, higher profile of success. Uh, this, driving this five hundred dollar car, it just you know it's just no good. Uh, you need you need a better car." He said, "I'm getting ready to trade mine, and um, I'm either going to give it to you or the Salvation Army." And uh, Teresa said, well, bring it down. We didn't even ask him what it was. Um, and so the next time he came down to pick up chickens, you know, he drove down and, and uh, he said, car's out front. You want to take it around? And so we went around front and it was a Lincoln Town car. And we drove it around the block. We parked it back in the front. And Teresa said, went around to Clinton. Uh, his name was Clinton Miller. Uh, and she said, uh, where do I sign? <laughs> and uh, we bought that car from him for a dollar and drove it for two years. And man, I mean, that thing had a trunk the size of a pickup truck. I mean, you know, it, it was, a, but anyway, that's emotional support, okay? That's good. Um, 
And then uh, another one of, you know, a thing that I've really come to believe is that you really don't have a viable business until you generate two salaries in the business, okay? That's a kind of a hard saying, but, um, but if, you, if you know the cycles of life, uh, you know that as you age, your energy wanes, your creativity wanes, and, um, and you, did, you just don't have the get up and go. Uh, mentally, mentally I'm 20. But when I get up in the morning, I don't feel 20. You know, if it ain't hurting, it ain't working. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a different thing. And so, and so all really successful, especially legacy businesses, don't just have one person at the helm. And in farming, I mean, what do you do if you're sick? What happens if you break a leg? What happens if, you know, uh, two, two people are a big deal. So I really believe that if we want a viable farm business, we have to set our sights and have a vision, a trajectory out there that we're going to get to two salaries as fast as we can get there. Because a one salary business is a very vulnerable, fragile business. Okay? And marketing, jumping into that, to all that, you know, processing and marketing and distribution, what that does is that it increases the pie big enough so that there is a place to assimilate a second person. All right? That's a big deal. Now, there are reasons why farmers don't want to market, okay? It's hard work. <laughs> you know, it, it, um, you know it's, uh, it, it's, it requires creativity. It, it involves people, and most of us farmers, we're farmers because we don't like people. So, <laughs> so realize, over these two days, as we do this whole marketing thing, remember... We're here to talk about marketing. Some of you sitting here, the idea, and when Sherry gets up here, you'll be blown away. I mean, Sherry um, um, thrives on making a cold call to a chef. Now, I'd rather you pull out my toenails, okay? I don't like... I, I like to go places where kind of, uh, where people are already kind of in it, you know, and want you to come. Um, I don't like to nose my, whatever, nose into a trough where I'm not really welcome. Um, so that's, that's different in, in, in temperaments, okay, different personalities. So as we talk about this marketing, the thing I want you to understand is, you are here because you realize that marketing is important for your business. You might not be the salesperson. There's a big difference between marketing and sales. Okay? And so marketing is the strategy. Sales are the execution. All right? Sales grow out of a marketing strategy. All right? And so, and so you don't have to be the one knocking on doors. For some of you, when I talk about knocking on doors, you get cold chills and, 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 and uh, want to run out that back door, okay? I get that. Totally get that, all right? But, and we, we are going to talk a lot about sales, but we're, but we're mainly focused on, on, on marketing as a strategy, and anyone can do that. Extroverts, introverts, people who don't like to make cold, you know, cold calls, whatever it is. Sales is not marketing. So you very well may come from this school, go back home, and you're going to find a salesperson. But from here, hopefully, you will take back a marketing strategy, all right, so that you can get on the same page with your salesperson or team or whatever. Are you with me? So don't, don't break into a cold chill that, it, that, that you're going to fail this two-day, whatever, time if you don't become a lover of knocking on doors and picking cold. So, I mean, we've, we've all read, uh, you know, Zig Ziglar, you know, who, who made millions selling fuller brushes door to door. You know, some of us can't even imagine doing it. And encyclopedias and, you know, all this stuff that used to go on uh, door to door. 
Zig Ziglar was a master, you know, and he, he loved it. Um, but most of us are not like that, so it's, it's hard work. Um, you're, the, another reason why farmers, why, another one of, our, one of our kind of emotional barriers is that we fear rejection because um, we're so emotionally vested in a product. Unlike a lot of things, products and services, you know, you're, 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 part of a, you're part of a team, you're part of a thing, you know, okay, so we're making, you know, uh, uh, gummy bears or whatever, okay? You, you know, it's, it's not a great big personally invested field. But for us as farmers, we're loving those animals, loving those tomatoes, loving that T-bone steak, right? We're loving that into health production on our place or a place that we've that we've been blessed to be a part of. We wake up every morning and we see the dew on the grass. We see the sparkling of the, of the sunshine on the dew and, the, and the, the garden spiders in the fall and the, right? And, and, and we're so emotionally vested in this that, that the fact that everybody in the world is not clamoring to our door is emotionally tough, okay? It, 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 it is, and we have to recognize that, and that's why sometimes, sometimes it's important to have a collaborator salesperson and us not do the sales, because we do get, oh, you don't want my, my chicken, I, 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 I stayed up with them at night, I kept the rats away, I, you know, I played, you know, Beethoven's Fifth, you know, I, um, you know, I, I sat out in the field with a shotgun because the fox was coming for three days and then finally got the guy, you know. Um, it, we're, so, we're so emotionally vested in it that it, it's a bit of a, bit of a, it, it, that's real, that's real. Um, peer dependency, okay. Uh, we farmers, you know, um, we, we don't like generally our peers to, dislike us. We like to be affirmed by our peers. And, uh, and when you start direct marketing, uh, you, by, by definition, you have to differentiate yourself. You, know, you have to explain, well, here's, here's what mine is. And, uh, and, and uh, people start taking uh, umbrage with that. Um, Alan Nation used to say, um, if you have an idea and you go to your neighbor and you present your idea and your neighbor thinks it's a great idea, don't do it. <laughs> but if you go to your neighbor and you have your idea and the neighbor says, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard, that's probably your answer. <laughs> okay. And finally, the fear of sounding self-promoting. You know, we farmers, we're a pretty kind of um, self-deprecating lot. Uh, aren't we? You know, I mean, have you ever gone to a party and somebody comes up, introduces themselves, and says, you know, hi, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Mitch, you know, Cavanaugh, whatever, and and uh, I'm, I, I'm just a heart surgeon. I'm just a heart surgeon. No, no, they, they don't say I'm just a heart surgeon. I'm a heart surgeon, right? We farmers, we, you know, we, we can always say I'm Joel, and I'm, I'm just a farmer. I'm just a farmer, you know. Right, it's too bad, too bad. <laughs> but w th th this, this is our mentality, right? Because because we've been we've been marginalized, uh, blue collared, condescending to, right, Th through the culture, right? And, and and so so when we start marketing and say, man, I got the bet, you know, in in our minds, down in our soul, we, man, I feel like a huckster, right? Uh, we do, you know, um, self promoting. We're just not. The, the farmer's psyche is not set up, it's not conducive to self-promotion. We, we work, <laughs> we, go out, we work, we put our head down, we work, right? You, you carry your water, you move your cows, you pull your weeds and your beans, you, you, you work, right? And, and, and we love it, it's not, it's not bad work, we love it, but we're not our, our vocation, our the agricultural career path does not promote selling and we got the best and coming you know it doesn't promote circus theatric right, right? 
self-promotion. And, 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 that's, and, and that's, that's, a, that's an emotional hurdle that we have to think about, uh, which again is a reason why sometimes a partner is better. I yeah, say, Betty. I'm Betty Moss and I'm healing this planet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah. And, and, Yeah, healing the planet, one bite at a time. It's on every one of our little bags. Yeah, yeah, that's good. But that's, that's, that's part of messaging. It's part of coming out of that hole uh, that, that, we've, that we've kind of been put in. All right. Um, yeah, most farmers really don't like people. Okay, and then I just put down some of these just, just to remind us that there are goals that can get in our way, I think, as we, as we head down this path. And, and, um, and, and beware of these goals. I, I call them uh, anti-goals. They, 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 they actually you know, hurt us from being able to go where we want to go. Uh, one is I want to have the highest priced product. Um, uh, Alan and I used to argue about this a little bit, you know, and, and uh, I'm not a pure capitalist, okay? Uh, I'll just say that. I'm not a, uh, I love capitalism, but I'm not a pure capitalist. And if my dad were alive today, he was an economics business, you know, dude. And, um, and, and if he were alive today, our, some of our attention would be about, he'd always say, well, price it whatever the market will bear. Well, no, I, I, I want to actually put Tyson's out of business. And, and I'm not going to do that with the highest priced product. So we price it and we figure out efficiently how to grow it with a margin that makes it work so that we can scale it, duplicate it. And, and, and that's just, you know, uh, so we can heal more land, touch more land, and that sort of thing. All right. Um, I want to be the bigger, I want to be the biggest or whatever, you know, that, that, that gets in the way. I want to franchise. There's nothing wrong with franchises. Man, franchises have been very, very successful. But don't, but don't, 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 a 